Glory be to God. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, definitely thank or oh, good night or oh, good morning. I don't know at what time of the day you may catch this, but I pray to God it is on time in the name of Jesus. So look, I just wanted to share some quick thoughts with you, man, and uh, just kind of encourage those that are seeking to be encouraged. And I'm, I'm coming to learn, I'm coming to have peace with the fact that this is not for everybody. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. I, 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 you know, it would be nice. It would be lovely if everybody caught on to uh, the desire of God to 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 <clears throat> to redeem the world. Uh, but we know the whole entire world will not be redeemed, that some people are going to reject the love of God all the way to their demise and so that is a choice that is their free will or that's their desire and we have to uh respect that uh we may not agree with it but i respect it just like i look for others to respect my choices and my desires uh and my will to serve the lord amen well look i just want to share this with you real quick and I shared with everybody Sunday about uh, the new year and some information about that. Uh, and, and it's not as, a, as, as relevant. The information I shared is not as relevant as the constant reminder that we must stay focused on Christ. No matter what, what day, no matter what time, no matter the season, no matter our situations and circumstances, that we must at all costs uh, stay focused on Jesus Christ. Keep our eyes on our Lord and our Savior. Keep our ears open to our Lord and our Savior. Uh, keep our spirit uh, keen to you know, the Holy Spirit. And so um, these scriptures and these thoughts fell in my, in my spirit. And hopefully it would encourage you like it encouraged me. It says, Rejoice and delight. And this is the Amplified Version, 1 Thessalonians. Uh, amplified. And the most of the uh, versions I, I, I share with you all is Amplified. And sometimes I'll do the New Living Translation. Sometimes I'll do the message. But hopefully no matter what. Uh, translation or version I use you see Christ you you hear Christ uh, in the name of Jesus because that's what it's all about it's not about all those different translations it's about hoping uh, helping that light to to turn on and or to get brighter uh, before you so you can clearly see the truth so you can clearly uh, recognize whatever it is God is doing in your life. So look what he says. And back to 1 Thessalonians. He says, because this messed me up. Oh my gosh. It messed me up. And it messes up a lot of people who know the word. But then when things happen, they struggle with allowing what they know to manifest in their lives which confuses those who have been paying attention to what we have been saying and what we've been doing he says rejoice always and delight in your faith be unceasing and persistent in prayer in every situation no matter what the circumstances, be thankful and continually give thanks to God. For this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Huh. <laughs> there was three things that stood out in those, in those scriptures. The three things were rejoice always. Make sure that you are rejoicing 
always and even though you may not show it even though you may not express it you ought to have joy in your heart if nothing else 24-7 it's not easy and as a matter of fact you and I are going to struggle with walking out these scriptures without the aid of the Holy Spirit strengthening us comforting us because I don't know about you but I have faced and I have been through some things that shook, well, tried to shake. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Tried to shake the very foundation of my faith. Tried to shake my love for the Father and my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That means it came at me hard. And it came at me real. And it came at me in a way that if it was not for the grace of God, I wouldn't have overcome them. I wouldn't have overcome them tests. I wouldn't have overcome those trials. I wouldn't have overcome those temptations. Uh-huh, yeah. Tests, trials, temptations. Oh, my. Yeah, I wouldn't have overcome them. But I thank God tonight. And I and and, and I and I can admit, I can be transparent and admit when I was going through, especially when I could not see the light at the end of the tunnel. People could say what they want to say, but there was some very darkness trying to consume me. Which, when you study the word, and you spend time at the master's feet, and he, he, he it, look, he is very great at preparing us, giving us a game plan, giving us certain scriptures, giving us certain songs, giving us certain uh, 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 acquaintances. So whenever the, the, the attacks of the enemy, whenever the wiles of the enemy come at us, we could be ready. You know, King David said it like this, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. That, that, that is real for some people. That they can be in, in such a dark situation, such a, 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 a hopeless appearing situation. We know because of Jesus Christ there in the, in the situation that we are in by his grace, being led in that situation by the grace of God, by the Holy Spirit, that it is not a hopeless situation. It's just an opportunity for the Lord to be glorified. But truth be told, when we are walking in the valley of the shadow of death, we will struggle not to fear the evil that we believe exists if our relationship with the Father is not on point. When our relationship with the Father is not where it should be at this particular time in our lives. So there's three things. So he says, rejoice always. Rejoice 24-7. Yeah, I may not always have a smile on my face, but you best believe I got a, 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 a joy in my heart. That the world did not give it to me and the world has no right to take it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And, 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 and the second thing is that was very evident in those scriptures is to pray without ceasing. Make sure that our, because prayer is no more than communicating with the Father. 
It's not asking all the time for, for you know, what you want and your will be done. And No, 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 no. Matter of fact, if I'm praying correctly, if I'm communing with the Father correctly, I, I am communing with him to find out what his will or to con, uh, uh, confirm his will. That I'm in agreement with his will so we can move forward. Now, notice I didn't say I can move forward so we can move forward because I don't want to do anything without the Father. Without the approval of my Father. Amen. And the third thing is to give thanks. Matter of fact, he said, be thankful and continually give thanks to God. No matter what the situation and circumstances are. And we are going to find ourselves in some of the most huh, mind-blowing situations. And, and look, these situations and circumstances, you might be the only one that really... Uh, <laughs> Really see what you're going through. Or really know what you're going through. Even though you may not understand what you're going through or why you're going through it. Because you could go to this one and you go to that one. I've been there. And it seems like nobody was moved as much, moved as much by what I was going through as I was. They were almost nonchalant. Here I wanted them to, amen, to cry down, amen, to pray and cry out to God so fire could come down from heaven and help eradicate whatever it was I was dealing with. And I, can I be honest with you? It, and, and, and sometimes we, we get upset with people because they are not moved like we think they ought to be moved or they're not responding or acting like we think they ought to respond and act. But maybe they're doing exactly what the Father needs them to do. Or is leading them to do. Because at the end of the day, like I always like to remind myself, God will share his glory with no man. No individual. And we're, cl we're quick. To pat individuals on the back and even give our allegiance to individuals. Even be sometimes in bondage to individuals that we think have done so much for us. And thank God for whatever they did for you. But whatever anybody does for you, they're able to do it by the grace of God. Oh boy. You know, and this hasn't always been easy, but when we find the grace of God to be consistent, be committed and consistent, when this, the more this becomes our lifestyle, I'm talking about Jesus Christ, the more Jesus Christ becomes our lifestyle. And I, ha I hate to use this word because I, it, it's not like you think, but the more Jesus Christ becomes our lifestyle, the easier we will find it to be joyful and thankful in everything. And that's really not easy for me to tell you because I know there's been some times that, God, how you expect me to be thankful about that God do you know what just happened or do you know what's going on right now and you want me to be rejoicing and thankful for that for people lying on me for people uh, uh, taking from me, me for granted for people and see boy I tell you man we love to fall right in the enemy's hands and allow ourselves to become self-centered where we make it all about us here God here God the Father has this master plan 
for the universe. And we, of course, we, we don't have time to even listen to God or let him share any of his master plan with us because right now we're trying to make him keep the spotlight on ourselves. Keep the spotlight on us. I'm going to share this thought with you and I'm through. Our joy. Remember this, this, this should be a light. Lord, I thank you. You want a thought for tonight? Lord, I thank you. Whatever it is that is, is, is you're wrestling with. Whatever it is you are battling with. Whatever it is you are struggling with, whatever it is you're grateful for, let your declaration, let your cry, let your communing with the Father be in the light of, Father, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Father, I thank you. Master, I thank you. Jesus, I thank you. This has not been easy, Lord. Can I be honest? Can I be transparent? Can I be real? This life of mine, I, I wanted to shine more, God. And, 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 and Father, I, I, I desire for it to shine more. But, Lord, it has not been easy. Lord, there has there have been times that I didn't even recognize myself. There have been times as much as I I I I, I was telling myself to you know to to think like this and to think like that and to be like this and to be like that that I found myself struggling. To believe even what I was saying. Even though through your word. You have reminded us to think on certain things. You have reminded us in your word. To cast down every thought and imagination. That tries and attempts to exalt itself. Against what we know about you. Lord this is the day this is the day where I say enough is enough this is the day where I say I'm going to finish this race this time God, I know I may have I, I, I may have bowed out the race before. God, I know I may have taken myself out the race before. Lord, I know I may have actually just stopped racing, all, running all together in the race. I know, Lord God, I may have done things. Come on, Lord. Come on, Holy Spirit. I may have done things to cause myself to be disqualified intentionally. But today is a day like no other. And maybe, Father, you knew this day was going to come. Maybe, God, you knew that that trouble it, it, for me was not going to last always. That there was going to be a space of grace, a window of opportunity, a season like no other in my life that if I maximize your grace... At a particular time, I'll never be the same. And so, Lord God, I run this race with the certainty of finishing this race by your grace with the help of your Holy Spirit.
I know, Lord, you, Father, you and Jesus Christ are on the sidelines that I'm not going to be running this race by myself. I know, I believe that you all are going to be running this race with me because you have helped so many others finish their races. And so, God, Father, it's not about me being first, second, or third. It's not about me uh, uh, getting a gold, silver, or bronze medal. It's about me enduring to the end. It's about you enduring to the end. Get up. I don't know who the Lord is talking to, but he's saying, get up off of your bed of affliction. Get up. Stop waddling. In your pity. And just give him all that you got. To his glory, his honor, and his praise. And if I be a man of God, you will never regret it. Get up. Lord saying, get up. Get up. Oh, but I fell down. But get up. I mean, I was taught in my studying, though a righteous man falls seven times, yet he will rise again. Seven is the number of completion. If I done rose again for the eighth time, eight is new beginning. I, 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 this is the eighth time that I've been up. And devil, you may have knocked me down seven times, but see that eight time or that next time or one of these times, devil, I promise. Because God said he'll never give me more, uh, more. He'll never give me more than I could bear. And so I'm not, look, I'm not, uh, look, I'm not concerned, overly concerned anymore about how many times I fall down. Because everything in me doesn't, amen, doesn't want to stay down. Everything in me want to keep on fighting. Everything in me want to see what the end is going to be. And so I pray in the mighty and wonderful name of Jesus that you will allow the Lord to supernaturally empower you with his grace to finish this race. This race is he, you know why he called you to this race? Because it's fixed. Not that you're necessarily going to come in first, second, or third, but it's fixed as far as you're going to finish. As long as you keep depending and relying on him, you're going to finish, and you're going to finish strong. You're going to finish stronger than when you started. Mm -hmm. I hear the Lord saying, "Do want me to tell somebody that you going to look if you just keep your eyes on Jesus Christ and if you just stay look, stay consistent." That's why the enemy been been after you or that's why the enemy been trying to distract you because he don't want you to be consistent. He don't want you to grow. He don't want you to evolve in someone or something. He can't defeat. See, as long as I'm walking in my flesh, he can beat me up every day. He can defeat me every day. But see, in Christ, hmm, ha, <laughs> in Christ, oh my gosh, the one who has defeated death, the one who has won every battle, yeah. He got a rude awakening when he came in contact, when the enemy came in contact with the power of God that was flowing through the life of Jesus Christ. He got more than he can handle. Yeah, yeah, amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yeah, God wants to give your enemy more than he can handle. But you got to do it his way. You got to do it in his timing. You got to stop being anxious. And you got to fight the good fight of faith. 
So in Jesus' mighty and wonderful name, God, we thank you, Father. We thank you for this day. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for every opportunity that you give us, Lord, to, to, uh, to have a relationship with you, to be intimate with you, to spend quality time with you. In the mighty and wonderful name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, for our our families. We thank you, Lord God, for our our our, our, our spouses. We thank you, Lord God, for those that have spouses. We thank you, Lord God, for those that have children. We thank you, Lord God, for those that have parents. We thank you, Lord God, for those that have family members and friends. We thank you, Lord God, for those that have jobs and coworkers and and businesses and and employees and bosses, Lord God, and and supervisors. We thank you, Lord God. For all those external relationships that we have by your grace that are not causing us to compromise, even though the enemy may be tempting us in these relationships, some of these relationships. No, these relationships, Father, the reason why we can give you thanks is because they give us an opportunity to display or exercise our faith in such a way where we know that we know that we know our love for you in Jesus Christ is genuine so we thank you giving us these opportunities to love our neighbor to love our brothers and sisters in Christ and even to love our enemies Lord we thank you for uh, our leaders and at times I know they seem confused. At times I know they seem selfish. At times I know they seem self-centered. At times I know they seem disconnected from reality. But Lord, we thank you. You allowed them in those positions. Even though some of them may have gotten in there. Um, what some may think illegally or wrongly. Uh, unethically we thank you in Jesus name you are in complete control so Lord we thank you for everybody that's on the prayer list everybody that's in our hearts that may not be on the prayer list Lord God but you know they're in our hearts that we uh, lift them up before you as well and we're just trusting and believing you Father to have the final say in every situation and circumstance and that we would have peace whatever your final say is whatever your will is that we would have peace like no other even if there are people around us falling apart let somebody, let us be a glimmer of hope as we represent your kingdom, you, your kingdom, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's in Jesus' mighty and wonderful name we pray. Amen and thank God.